are you? It's Daydream Austin, aka Oya Bumi. Welcome to another episode of My Arisha Journey. Happy New Year! If you're watching this, this means that you made it. You made it another year. Welcome. Welcome to 2020. Um, so this is going to be a tarot reading for the year. I posted a poll on the community tab in YouTube. I asked you guys to vote for what you wanted me to focus on. Of course, it was a split decision, so I'll be focusing on two things. The first is an overview of the year. The second is like a spiritual checkup, right? Which is like the lessons and things that spirit wants us to focus on. So, um, the first section, the overview, I'm going, I've broken it up into the four quarters of the year. We'll be focusing first on January, February, March. I've already prayed and shuffled the cards so you wouldn't have to sit and listen to me shuffling because that can be pretty annoying sometimes. So I've done that and I just want to get started because I don't want this to be an all day thing or too long a video for you guys, okay? So let's start with the overview for January, February, February and March. I'll do the spiritual checkup in the second half, okay? So there are going to be times when I get quiet so I can channel messages. We have some reversals here. I'm gonna turn around. So for the first quarter of the year, I see that people are very, very serious about their legacy. Like there's some type of new thinking, fresh um, thinking and ideas that is coming in about one's legacy, about one's family, about what we're trying to build in the new year. And that's usually what happens, right? At the beginning of the year, we're really considering things, reconsidering, looking at things. So what we have here is the page, the Knight of Swords, and then the Ten of Pentacles. And for me, that shows me that someone is um, kind of graduating, right, through these levels in the swords, right, from the page of swords to the knight of swords. So there's like fresh information coming in, communication and news that's really making someone feel like they really need to take life seriously and figure out what it is that they want to create in the year to come. So... You know, it kind of makes me think of someone who's had a near-death experience, right? And they've experienced like rock bottom. They've experienced the fear of not having, of not having this life, of not valuing this life. And because of that, they've matured and are now in like, okay, a rush to get to this. Like, what is it that I want to create? Who do I want to create things with? You know, like I, I want more in my life. How do I cultivate more? How do I cultivate more money? How do I uh, push my legacy forward in a way that would um, do my bloodline justice? We have an elder sitting here. So this is generations. You know, we're thinking about um, generations, what it would look like the next generation of our family or of our families. So remember, this is for the collective. So I'm just giving like an overview of what I'm seeing. Then we have the emperor and the queen of wands. A very fiery, passionate couple of folks. Um, the emperor can be a little too stern at times, a little bit of an asshole, a little bit of a jerk, just doing a little too much. Um, the queen of wands, another very uh, fiery, passionate energy. Um, but I see these two individuals as people who can definitely make this happen. Like this is nothing for the emperor and the queen of wands, right? So it's like really tapping into the divine masculine energy and tapping into the divine feminine, the divine masculine as the action oriented, not to say that the, the feminine doesn't have that too, right? But the masculine is more of that, um, action oriented um, very forward move, moving type of energy. The Queen of Wands is more receptive, right? So she, she can get just as much as the Emperor, but the way she gets it is going to be different. 
the way she gets it might might be a little bit more spiritual esoteric and things like that so what's interesting is we have a a good amount of court cards here right and remember i was talking about that maturity that moving up through the levels the only one we don't have here is the king um and i feel like the emperor is like the trump of that so for the first quarter of the year there's like this focus on maturity right moving from one level to another um something about our communication and our thinking so i don't i feel like changes are going to come we're gonna people are start are going to start to have insights that are really gonna make them feel like they have to move quickly towards building the the life that they want and i don't know what that is it kind of makes me feel like something might happen that's going to really shake people up and and make them you know really see like yo i really need to get this together because you know this could end at any moment excuse me that's the first quarter second quarter april may june let's see so we go from this very like fast moving right fast pace um growth and i feel like this happens right so you know how sometimes you're like feeling so good and you're like on the move and everything's going great and then here comes that old voice that old practice of self-sabotage something that just stops you dead in your tracks and you bind yourself with that same old thinking that same way of being um it's time to release yourself from this bondage right so i see i see us the collective right maybe moving you know moving back into the space of fear and and not being sure right that we can do this so say some really we're move, we're making some strides and we're like okay we got to get forward we got to get moving forward on on these changes in our lives and then we become afraid with this eight of swords and then we're just like okay wait a minute you know we start to kind of go in another direction because we remember that we're trying not to live in this this um very heavy uh, state of bondage right internal mental imprisonment so we begin to walk away from that because it's like okay we still want to build we still want to do the things that we want to do we want to see our desires made manifest but because of what we've been through in the past we're afraid right and we're cautious sometimes overly cautious right imagine these two together this one is, um, well, this one is bound, literally, self-bound, because her, the um, binding is so loose that she could probably get out of it herself, right? And this guy, he's not physically bound, but I think he's bound by the fear of uh, past hurts repeating themselves. Um, he's the wounded warrior, right? So we have two people here that are just afraid but i feel like we're being encouraged to move away from that type of thinking that old way of being because we need to graduate we need to um mature like we saw in that first quarter right we don't want to go backwards that's the point of that that second quarter is gonna lead to people kind of leaving behind old ways of thinking and being old patterns of thinking and being and adopting a more open and youthful approach to life a more passionate joy filled joy filled jovial way of life and again we have some court cards so we have the page of cups and the knight of wands now for the second quarter this could represent love offers coming in right pretty quickly um you see this phallic symbol here and this fish on um, the second quarter we could see some pregnancies for those of you who are 
um, looking for that. For those of you who are not looking for that, be careful the second quarter because that's something that can come in. But what I do see is a very transformative time and we're going to have an opportunity to show if we've grown spiritually. Because when this comes up, right, when these old practices come up, when these old ways of being and thinking and all that mess and, you know, our shadow, the fear of our shadow comes up, are we going to leave it behind, right, and go towards something new and, and live life with a more youthful, fresh, joyous perspective? and then move towards our passions and goals, or are we gonna get stuck? Are we going to be bound? Second quarter, we get to show if we've moved forward, if we've done anything differently, you know, if we've decided to do anything differently, because I think, you know, as spiritual people particularly, we talk a good game, but then when it's time to show and prove, we don't be doing too good. Kudos to those of you who do great when that time comes. I have not been doing that great. I'm hoping that 2020 is better for me. Um, July, August, September, the third quarter. We got some interesting energy coming in. So as soon as the, the summer months hit, there is this new, fresh passionate energy coming in um you know this this light this intuition you know like the the seeds of of passion planted we go from the ace of wands to the king of wands right so someone people in the collective are being handed this wand and what i love is that they're taking it up and becoming the king of wands they're not afraid. They're ready for transformation. They're ready to walk in their passion, um, to go in the direction towards their destiny. But what's going to happen after this is going to take a lot of courage, right? So the first two quarters, there's been like this push to mature and evolve. Um, some of us might kind of fall back to old, you know, patterns. Then this third quarter, we get this new fresh energy coming in, we take it up, we become the king, and then we have the fool. So we'll be expected to take this information, take this insight, take this intuitive hit, and take a leap of faith. Not just sit on it, you know, not just kind of hang out with it. It's like you're getting something, you're getting a gift that's going to help you level up. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to go in a new direction? Are you going to start a new, start fresh, um, start a, you know, go in a new direction? Go towards your destiny, your, your higher self. You see the sun here, this like enlightenment. There's something new that you're receiving. Are you going to go towards it or not? What gets you going? I feel like the third quarter is also about what gets you excited. What fills you up? You know, what makes you want to get up every morning and, and conquer the day? Because whatever that is, I feel like you're being encouraged to go in that direction. And I hope you have the courage to do so. In the fourth quarter, remember we were just talking about this new direction, right? Right? We're moving on. The collective is moving on from something. And what I like about the Six of Swords is that the collective you see here is like these ripples in the water. It's like rough waters, but the collective is moving towards, um, you know, just more gentle waters. Like this taking this leap of faith is going to lead to something that feels so much better, even if you don't see it initially, right? You know, for for parents, this might be moving away from um, a child's father or mother. This could just mean movement, right? But what I'm seeing is that overall, 
There is a push, a movement towards collaboration. So where there's been discord, right? Um, where there's been confusion, there's like a coming together. But it doesn't happen automatically. There's work that goes into coming into this family unit. Um, there's work that goes into coming together like this, right? So, so we're moving into a new period. Maybe the third person here is an elder who's needed to bring about peace in a relationship, you know, peace that was missing. Maybe that third party is a therapist. But there's something here about working together, collaborating to bring about this um, abundance. So what we might see in the fourth quarter is, uh, and I'm also seeing something about transferring partners. So leaving behind um, one partner that maybe wasn't a good fit for you. Kind of like criss crisscross and switching because I do believe there are a lot of people who started off in relationships that might not be for them and what's happening now are they're coming to that conclusion they're moving on right and then moving towards their family unit and not in a not in a funky way right where we're cheating and we're doing things like that but in a way where there are discussions had where there's understanding that you know what this is not for us right now so we're gonna move forward but the fourth quarter is about movement um, towards more collaboration towards honesty towards building together and building legacy so imagine in this um, in 2020 we have the ten of Pentacles and the ten of cups we have the ability to build truly build beautiful solid foundations, rock solid foundations that are going to support our um, emotional fulfillment only if we choose to, only if we choose to leave negative thinking behind, only if we choose to leave old patterns behind, only if we choose to work together, only if we choose to do things differently, to take the things that are given and hand it to us by spirit, take them and um, be bosses about them, like grow up, you know, handle these things. Like sometimes we get gifts and we squander the gifts and then get mad. Like, what are you mad about? You did this to yourself. You squandered the gift that spirit gave you, right? We're being encouraged, you know, again, to walk away from certain things, to leave things behind, to stop holding on, to stop being so offensive and, and defensive and feeling like, what happened before is going to repeat. You know, like things can't possibly get better. New communication, new thinking, and moving forward on that, right? But also being very clear, having clarity, um, discernment about which way we're moving, leveling up, being who we're meant to be as divine feminine, divine masculine, whatever that means to you, being who you're meant to be. So this year is going to um, bring a lot of opportunity to grow, but it's going to take us shedding old skin, um, letting go of the old and transforming. And I hope that we're up for it. I feel like the people who are not ready to level up are going to be left behind. And I don't know what spirit is going to do with them. I feel like spirit is not really playing with people. Okay, so let's just do the spiritual checkup for the year. We have some oracle cards here and some tarot cards. So the... The spiritual lessons this year, remember we talked about moving on, right? We have the chariot and we have death here. So I feel like we're being encouraged to let things die. We've been holding on to some very, very 
harmful ways of living, um, processing information um, that are not helpful to us. And I feel like spirit is like, either you let that die or you die. And that doesn't mean necessarily a physical death. But imagine if you keep passing up on the opportunities that spirit grants you, if you keep squandering opportunities, if you keep making, you know, repeating negative cycles over and over again, in a sense, you are dead. You're not growing. You're not progressing. Let things go. Let them die or you die, right? You're dead. There's nothing about you that's alive. Um... The chariot car features Oya. So you see the tornado in the background? This is going to be a year where we're being encouraged to change. Change does not always come gently. It doesn't always feel good and comfortable. But Oya is coming in this year to bring a shift. Um, and that's going to have to be a shift in behavior, a shift in thinking, like I said, it's either we level up or we die. That's it. We die on the inside and then we've squandered a lifetime. And then we've um, squandered a destiny and we'll have to come back and do it again. So we have the nine of wands here again, but peer, paired with the nine of pentacles. I'm going to say this is about really guarding your wealth, right? So when you're blessed with these new opportunities, when you're blessed with these, um, this beautiful new way of thinking and processing information, don't go back, right? Guard those coins like they're your jewels. Like these are jewels that you're being given, that, you're, that are being shared with you by spirit. Guard them with your life, hold them tightly. Don't let them go, right? Just like um, I talked about the tens, the ten of pentacles and the, the ten of cups. If you are blessed enough to have these, you guard them with your life, right? You stand tall and you're like, no, I'm not letting this go. Are you crazy? You know, we don't let those things go. We don't squander opportunities. The Nine of Pentacles in the traditional Rider Waite tarot shows a woman who is standing and just really enjoying the fruits of her labor. She's, I see her as like a kept woman. She's a kept individual. She's built up this great fortune and wealth for herself. Um, and that's right before the Ten of Coins, right? So it's like protecting your wealth, holding it closely, not squandering it or letting it go. Some of the other lessons this year are about gratitude. We have the kangaroo from the animal, the power animal oracle cards. It says, be grateful for all you are blessed with. Every day that you wake up, no matter how you're feeling, you should be like, thank you so much for everything. I think I'm grateful every day for what I have that just, you know, keeps me alive. I have shelter. I have fresh water. I have food i have clothing you know i'm grateful for those things i have money to pay my bills that's a blessing um another spiritual lesson this year is playfulness so while you're doing all of that work right and and shedding old skin and growing up the dolphin comes and tells you to take time to play so you're going to be grateful you're going to be playful remember i was saying that jovial energy i always see the page of cups as a very like fun-loving guy like he's just the life of the party i mean look at his clothes <laughs> he's he's lit you know and i say that's what we're being encouraged to do this year is to have some fun to be grateful to have fun to move out of those ways of thinking that are attached to lack right we have the buffalo abundance um you are provided for in all ways so there's sometimes this tendency to remember where we, we come from and to be stuck in the energetic imprint of that. So if you grew up in poverty and you had to fight for everything you, you have, sometimes there's this, there's this fear of going back. And they're saying, don't, don't go back to that. 
Be grateful for what you have. Play and enjoy life and know that you are taken care of. And from the Nature's Oracle deck, I have hope and happiness. What a beautiful card. So we're being encouraged to have hope, right? To know that things can get better. We don't have to get stuck in this fearful energy that things will remain the same forever. Know that good things are coming. Hope, be hopeful. Hopefulness is one of the tenets of Ifa. We don't sit around thinking um, that things are going to be the same forever. We are sure that there are going to be shifts, positive shifts that E-Ray is going to come to us. Be gentle with yourself. So as you're going through these changes, like I said, change is not easy, right? When Oya comes, um, it won't be easy. It won't always be fun. But you're to be gentle with yourself through this process of transformation. Self-care is big this year. And I love that this card came up alongside abundance. Make a wish. So we have the make a wish and abundance card. You saw that 10 of pentacles and that 10 of cups? Honey, this year can be lit if you want it to be. If you are in agreement with it, um, sit with your Ori, sit with your own personal divinity, your own personal deity, and be very clear about what it is that you want to cultivate, because I feel like this is a year where those things can come to pass if we level up. If we don't level up, there's just death. If we do level up, there is abundance and stability and love and so many good things, but it's up to us to um, bring that in, to call that in, right? We're co-creators, so we can't just sit on it and say, oh, these things are going to happen. No, we have work to do. Okay, now, if you're an EFA follower, you know that we're still under the EFA reading of the year for 2019-2020. I'm going to include that link in the description box so you can go back and, and read it. We received Otuda Meiji. Otuda Meiji talked about fight. So if you've had fights with people so far, try to, as you're moving forward to avoid that contentious discord um, energy because it's just in the air this year. Um, it talks about wealth. Um, it talks about the need to appreciate and respect women. Men, this was a very big point for you. You cannot abandon women. You cannot, you know, do foul things to them this year because it's going to fuck you up. Like, now you're putting yourself in a bad position with spirit. And that's your business. Like, if that's what you want to do, you know, I don't think it's going to be fun for you. Um, there were messages about children and watching your children, making sure no one kids, kidnaps your children. Always know where your children are. Um, there were so many messages. Like I said, check the description box. But until June, we're still under that reading, okay? Guys, it was so good talking to you. I see that we have a great opportunity to grow, expand, um, and get closer to our highest destiny, our, our highest self, and our higher calling, but it's going to take some work. I pray that your Ori will guide you well, that your Ori would not allow your character to disrupt or contradict your destiny, okay? I pray that for you and for myself. I'll talk to you soon. If you want to contact me, go to daydreamalston.com. You can go there to contact me or just for more information. And if you want your own personal tarot reading, contact me there.